Standard & Poor's has rated 3.4 billion worth of cap bonds in the first half of 2014. That's a record and more than in the whole of 2009. Marin, can you tell me what's driving this increase in volume? It's um, reduction in pricing that um, insurers can um, actually buy the protection at at the moment. Um, and that <coughs> reduction in pricing is driven by competition. Competition not only between the alternative capital markets and the traditional reinsurance market like we've heard a lot about, um, but it's actually also a lot of competition between the alternative capital market players themselves. Um, they are struggling to find profitable investment opportunities for their capital <coughs> under management and they've had to turn capital away. And with this increase in supply, we've seen the reduction in pricing and not only old, but also a few new issuers have come to market to take advantage of these favorable market conditions. Okay, so it sounds like an interesting environment, but what are some of the risks for the investors? Um, obviously, there is um, you know, the terms and conditions in the, in the market, but f first of all, 2014 has seen most of the transactions we've rated have actually been on an ultimate net loss basis or in cat bond terms you have used an indemnity trigger. So the cat bond will pay out based on the actual losses of the seed and not on some industry losses or certain event parameters. So obviously seed <laughs> you know, prefer indemnity triggers because it reduces their basis risk. But from an investor's perspective who's taking on the risks, um, they are now exposed to the risk of the of the seed and the, uh, the, the business and the claims processes. And so the um, investors need to have a really detailed understanding of each seed. And they need to understand how do they underwrite their, the policies, how do they handle the claims after an event. And the question is whether they actually do have that knowledge. And then the second point is that the terms and conditions have broadened in the market um, for deals. There was actually one transaction this year which we didn't rate that provided protection to the um, insurer for unmodeled risks such as volcanic eruption or meteorite impact and um, on an indemnity basis on annual aggregate basis. And so we are, we are questioning whether um, you know, this, uh, this provides more risks in the long term for, for the sector. So where do you see future growth for the market? Well, we <coughs> think the market will continue to grow. Uh, whether it will double in the next five years, as some market participants are saying, we think it's going to be a m bit more moderate growth unless there's a drastic increase in demand from, from insurers for alternative capital market products. Um, we think growth should come from increase in take-up rates on, in catastrophe-prone areas or from governments buying catastrophe protection or um, you know, some product innovations driven by joint ventures between uh, good underwriters and alternative capital market players. But we caution that the growth should not be coming from you know, <coughs> writing more business and search for diversification and, y and yield and at the same time neglecting um, you know, proper underwriting and also due diligence. Marin, thank you very much for that summary. I do recommend the report that Marin's just published for more detail. Thank you. Mm -hmm.